Uh, thank you. And thank you, uh, Goat and Anton, for inviting me. Um, I hope you see the presentation mode and not the presenter mode. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to dive a bit more onto the data of the, of the EM data after the presentation of uh, Andreas and of uh, Clay. And, I, and, and, and in the dive into the data, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, use the, this concept of cell types. And that concept, this concept of cell types is useful for us for, um, for major two reasons. One of them, it's a strategy to navigate this kind of very dense uh, and rich uh, connectivity maps. And, and, and the other reason is that it's a very useful tool to link the, the data that we get from the EM, which is basically structure and connectivity, to other modalities of the data that EM cannot, um, cannot uh, at the moment kind of, kind of identify, but it's very, but it's very useful for, for models, like for example, synapse physiology. Um, so we can say well, this is the size of the synapse, but from the M we cannot say if it depresses or facilitates. Or for example, the proteomics, uh, the, the peptidergic compositions of a particular cell, citing again the, the work of Stephen Smith that already Terry mentioned. So using the cell types, um, the concept of cell types, even though no single experiment can put all of this data together, but using the concept of cell types, we can, you can in principle bring it all together um, in, 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 in models. Um, so there's a, this, the next slide is one that you have seen that you have seen before, but it's just a reminder that the work that I'm gonna that I'm going to present is like it's this very wonderful collaboration sponsored by Arfa between between our our team at the Allen and the team of uh, Andreas Tulias uh, at Baylor and then and then Sebastian and then Sebastian Sue. Um, and and the original kind of questions that drove kind of that drove us to acquire this, 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 this EM data sets were, were, were the description of cell types, both in terms of their morphology and their connectivity, um, how to, and then map these kind of cell types in the, into uh, wiring diagrams of particular areas, and then, and then, and then relate this kind of structure to the, to the, to the functional, and um, which is something that I'll not touch on, um, on today. But uh, on my next slide, I'm gonna show you Kind of a bit about the data looks like. Just remind that the data is so rich. There's many other components of it that we are not kind of exploring. But uh, hopefully, maybe you and others will be interested in exploring these data sets. Uh, so, for example, from this data, you can collect all the surface membrane area of a neuron. You know the exact locations of different organelles like mitochondria. You can go and look uh, in. Does, does a particular cell target all the dendrites of another neuron or just a part or just some dendrites? In the dendrites that it targets, does it cluster the synapses or distributes them evenly over that dendrite? Are some of those synapses uh, covered with microglia? Are some of them, are some of them close to, um, to blood vessels and so forth? All of them, again, it kind of speaks to the richness of the data that we are not exploring, but that's part of the reason we also are working to make this data available online to others to to explore and, and um, so I hope you can see the video. Probably it's gonna maybe go a bit too slow, but just to kind of show you the data. So at this kind of a lower mag, you can see some somas here. Those are these large sections. The white ones are blood vessels. You can start to see dendrites. And as you zoom in, there's gonna be smaller and smaller process, which will be the axons that you can also see at the, at the M level. Um, this particular, that particular cell is a neuron. This particular one is gonna be a glial cell. And as you zoom in, you can start to see the synapses. Here's one, here's another, and, and, and so forth. Again, this is to give you, for the, the ones of you that don't live in these data sets daily, this is how the data, this is how the data looks. And thanks to the work of the team of Sebastian Sung, we are able to kind of segment all these different axons, dendrites, um, cell types, blood vessels, and so forth from the data. And that was a single plane, and this is now in, 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 in 3D. So how does, uh, I have one method, uh, one method slide just to, just to, and Andreas already talked a bit on this. So I kind of plus and plex and sometimes nerve wracking pipeline to generate these data sets. Uh, but um, but uh, part of our work on, our, on IRP is to make this pipeline as reproducible as possible so that we can now can, 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 can create over areas, over species, to kind of uh, answer some of the 
questions that were actually posed before, like are similarities from mouse to mouse, are similar, are there properties that are constant over areas or even uh, over your species? So the, the data, the, all our experiments in the mouse start with functional imaging acquisition, in the case of our was done by Andreas team. Then we, then we, we perfuse and block from that part of the brain the exactly part that had the, the, the data that was imaging vivo. There's a lot of histology. There's the nerve wracking process that takes, for, for the case of the ARPA data set, 12 days and nights uh, sectioning with all this kind of the, the risk of, if we lose sections, we have to start with the new mouse from Andreas, which will make him very unhappy because they were hard to record all those tens of thousands of neurons. And then, and that's the imaging. Then there's the imaging, the EM imaging process, which for ARPA took about six months for a cubic millimeter of tissue. Uh, but it's now kind of, it's, kind of half of its time currently. Then there's co-registration, so we can relate the structure to the function, and then, uh, sorry, the segmentation, so we can extract the neuronal processes out of the EM data. And then there's all this, the visualization and, and analysis tools, um, which, which, um, which, in a way, one takes for granted once we have the data that is just kind of diving in, but analyzed data at this scale is actually not a trivial at all, and there's a lot of work, both uh, both of in our team um, with um, with um, Forrest Coleman and um, and Casey uh, Chaser Mitzel and uh, and then Sebastian team and also at uh, Andreas team to create the tools so that both us and hopefully and and, and you as well for the data set that the data set that's already public can can analyze it. So once we go through all this process, how does the segmentation look? And I want to show you uh, a video of an example. This is a, a, single, a single synapse between an axon in blue and a spine is red. So this, um, this synapse happens to be close to the border between V1 and RL on that volume that Andreas. Uh, and, and, and through the segmentation, you can now follow that axon back to its soma. It's a layer two, three cell in, in RL. Um, and, uh, and also kind of see, and here we just uh, show a few of those thousands of, of postsynaptic targets, we can see it's postsynaptic targets across uh, between both locally in our L, even one across the distance of uh, hundreds of hundreds of microns. And you can also then map how many synapses, what's the sign of synapse between which dendrites and, 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 and so forth. And um, so we have now, as Clay was pointed out, we have now in the mouse collected four of these data sets. Uh, one was our, we call it Pinky, is our smallest uh, data set. It's, it is small compared to the others, but one would argue that three million synapses is nothing, it's, it's not small at all. And this, is, this data set is now public, as well as the tools to analyze it. Um, we have then collected a second, a second data set um, that, um, that uh, covers P to white matter, but it's kind of seen, just 40 microns. And then we have now collected the IARPA data set, which lives at the border between uh, four cortical areas and, and a, second, a second millimeter data set that, is, that will be in the process of being segmented um, uh, um, uh, uh, very soon. And, and the kind of the analysis that I'm gonna uh, tell you about is from this smaller data set that's already public. And, and the first example of using data uh, cell types to explore this data um, that, I'm, that I'm gonna discuss, it's based on the, on the analysis of synapse size, or in this particular case, a correlated synapse size, which is, uh, which is, which is spine volume. And uh, us and, 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 and many others uh, before us, have, 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 every time someone measures um, the distribution of synapse sizes, either as inputs to a particular cell type or as outputs of a particular cell type, one sees a log normal distribution of, of, of synapse sizes. Um, what, what is difficult to do, and we can do in this data set, is to actually go and look, instead of looking just at the total synapse that are input to a neuron or its total output, is just where you just know either the presynaptic, presynaptic type or postsynaptic type, is to map this distribution of uh, synapse sizes um, between in the situation where we know both the presynaptic and the postsynaptic type. And that's what we did here. And this is the work from, a, uh, from Sven Dorkenwald, um, uh, a PhD student at Sebastian Sung. 
And, and for that, we use our smaller data set that you see on the left. And here's an example um, of, two, of, two, of two pyramidal cells. Those are the layer two, three pyramidal cells. That's the cell type that we'll be looking here. And you can see that here, two, two examples of a synapse form between the yellow cell onto the gray cell. And uh, we can map it because we have the reconstruction of these neurons. We can map its size or, and, and in the graphs, I'm gonna show you the, the the spine spine volume, and then see if this the distribution of the sign is what would we expect from the literature, which is a long normal distribution, or if or if it is something more interesting. And um, and, uh, and 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 for that we 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 use 1900, 1900 synapses between between this between this particular uh, cell type. So and that's what you see here: the distribution on the first on the first graph. Uh, Spine had volume on the x-axis and counts on the on the on the y-axis, and you see that it doesn't match exactly with the log normal, which is here in blue, and it actually has this bump here, and uh, and, and 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 this is all of the synapses between layer two three to layer two three cells. If now we restrict ourselves just for the synapses that have pairs, which means in, in the case that the um, layer two three cell form two synapses with another layer two three cell you can start to see even more clear that there is a second bump. And this is better described by, um, by, uh, by, uh, by actually two log normals instead of just one, which, which suggests to us that uh, these synapse sizes, when you actually know exactly what, who is the presynaptic and postsynaptic type, uh, um, um, separate themselves in two states, a small size synapse state and a large size synapse state. And what is interesting about it is that um, for a, for, for a long time, it has been suggested this, this such, a, such a division of weights into kind of, into kind of, um, uh, of, of, uh, of states will be, will be important for memory stability. And, and I, this is one of the first times that at the structural level, we can see, we can see this kind of, this, this kind of uh, evidence that, uh, that, uh, that uh, synapse sizes, again, in this case, spine volume, but we also did the control for the synapse side, um, um, uh, can, can, be, can be described of more, instead of just one continuous state, two different states, a small and, and large synapse. Um, so, however, this is, just, um, this is just kind of structure. And, and, uh, and as, as, as I mentioned in the beginning, it's important to, to link this, 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 this kind of structural data with other properties of cell types. Um, pr from the EM, from our EM data set, we can link it to calcium imaging, we can extract the connectivity, we can extract morphology, we can have organelles, we can use this for biophysical modeling or wiring models, but, but we don't have transcriptomics associated with these cells. We don't have electrophysiology, we don't have synaptic physiology. However, since many of the data that is being acquired, not just at the Institute, but in other groups as well, and, and Andreas showed some of his own work on this, uh, in, in most of these studies, people also collect, collect uh, single cell morphology. So morphology can be used as a link between, uh, between the, the, the data that we can collect at EM and the other modalities that are collected in other experiments. Um, this is not the only way to do this, but it's, this is a, a way that we can do right now. And, and for that, I'm gonna use an example of another, first another cell type. And, and that is the example of the, of the oh, and before I do that, so, so, so here's an example of cell type classification based on morphology from, uh, from the work of, uh, of, of, uh, of, um, of, um, of Goins et al. and, and Sorensen 2019. And here's one from, from uh, Basilica Tasik on the transcriptomics and, and one cell, Type that is very clear in, in all of this is the Shanlia cell. It has a very clear morphology, it's very, it has a very clear transcriptomic profile, and, and, that's, and that's a good example for us to start with because it also has a very clear connectivity pattern. Shanlia cells target almost exclusively the axon initial segment of, um, of uh, um, sorry, neurons, and so it, they are very easy to, to find in our YAM data sets, even fragments of axons that we can directly assign to the Shanlia cells. And, um, and so, and to show you that, uh, here's a video from, again, the same data set. Um, 
um, this is the work that's been led by uh, Casey Schneider Mittel. Um, and you can see here in gray, um, just the, we have cut off the dendrite, so just the soma in the action initial segment of uh, four pyramidal cells in that volume, that same volume that I showed you uh, before in gray. Um, we have cut off the dendrites for simplicity. And now you're gonna, I'm going to show you the innervation of these cells by, uh, by uh, first a single chandelier cell here in red. You can see it forms sinus with the actual initial segment. And you, can, you might be starting to note that some cells receive very few synapses or none. Others receive a lot of synapses. And so not what you see now here is not just one, but several, several um, uh, Shunli accents targeting those cells, and now the complete the complete map of the of the Shunli connectivity to um, to to the cells in the volume. And again, what is nice about the Shunli cells, since they are so specific to the action initial segment, you can for the first time address completeness. We know that for those pyramidal cells, we have all of the Shunli synapses. Uh, for all of those pyramidal cells, we know all of the Shunli synapses that they receive how many they are, how big they are, and so forth. Um, and, and so it allows us to map for each of the pyramidal cells here in the y-axis, all, 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 all of the, all of the, all of the presynaptic Schindler cells or accents, as well as the total number of synapses each Shunli individual accent forms with that pyramidal cell. And, and the first thing that, that uh, becomes very obvious is that even though uh, the Shunli projection to the action initial segment is sort of being very, very by many as very powerful, it targets the point of the axon where the, the axon, uh, uh, the, the action potential um, starts. It, it is in fact a very sparse projection, which you can see that some pyramidal cells completely escape uh, uh, Chandelier input. They don't receive any input to, this, to, to their axon initial segment from Chandelier cells. Many receive actually very few, uh, 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 on average, nine synapses, while others receive a lot of Chandelier input. And, um, and, and, and just to give you uh, an idea of contrast, this is very different from the input to the, to the to the soma of those same pyramidal cells, which is very nearby, no one escapes inhibition to their soma. Uh, and, and not only no one escapes inhibition to their soma, you know, the count starts at 50. So it's very, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's kind of very, it's, it's very, very different. Uh, at, at the same time, and this is data that I cannot, um, I don't have time to show you, but will be, but it's on the paper. We also, we also find that um, we see no signs of, um, of target specificity by individual Chandelier accents beyond kind of spatial proximity, which suggested to us that, um, that uh, the sh this kind of lack of target specificity suggested to us that the Chandelier might be carrying um, a kind of unspecific or, or global inhibitory signal that is then adjusted by the number of synapses to each pyramidal cell. Um, and, and, and to look for them, we, we again, we take advantage of the concept of cell types as a tool, and because the Shunlia cells have such a clear transcriptomic, uh, a clear genetic profile, um, we, with a combination of of, uh, of of transgenic mice and virus injection and 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 and, and um, viral viral delivery, we can we could record with calcium imaging uh, from 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 the from the Shunlia cells in the. In the, in the primary visual cortex of the mouth and see how their function related to the structure that we're seeing. And what you see in this, what you see in this video is just Chandelier cells. Um, they, they, these different planes on the same mouth were kind of recorded uh, simultaneously. And you can see here the somas of the different cells and the di different dots are the accents and dendrites of these Chandelier cells uh, over the different planes. And this was work done by uh, Jun Zhuang. Um, and as I hope you can see even through Zoom, the Shunli cells are all active kind of together. They, 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 they are, it's like there was a single Shunli cell in the, in the, in the, in the primary visual cortex of the, of the, of the, of the mouse. And um, this is the, the, the video, but the, the quantitative analysis of the data shows the same thing. So this is for those. Give me 10 minutes. Okay, yeah, I think I'm on time. Um, 
for those five cells that are shown on that video, you can see here their, their, the traces of their activity, and you can see that they are highly correlated. You can, you can see here on the graph their pairwise co correlation coefficient, uh, uh, and, and not just from this, but for uh, all the cells on the, I think it was three mice that we looked at this. And, 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 and here is a comparison of their kind of pairwise correlation with other, with other kind of cell types, um, data extracted from the Allen Institute Brain Observatory. And you can see that even, so Shenley cells are parvalumin cells, so even within the parvalumin cells, they are much more correlated than the others, and, uh, and, and definitely more than the VIP to VIP correlations, SST to SST correlations, and so forth. And, and the other interesting thing is that when, when are they active? Um, they are active during not only during running together, but in particular during pupil area, during pupil dilation, uh, which is um, highly correlated with arousal. So, so, <clears throat> so, uh, so, again, what this suggests to us, both the physiology and the anatomy, is that um, the Shunley cells carry um, uh, a global inhibitory signal, mo um, particularly during arousal, then then is individually adjusted to each neuron by the number of synapses that they receive on the action initial segment. Um, um, and um, so one other thing that we, that we did, and I don't have time to go into super detail, but since it's a modeling workshop, it, 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 it's, important to, it's important also to, to cite is uh, collaborating with Costas Anastasio and Ani Nandi, we basically put all this connectivity information into a biophysical modeling uh, model of, the, of, 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 of cells in primary visual cortex um, and, 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 and ask, and ask, and ask the, 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 the question, since there's few synapses there compared to, um, compared to the SOMA, is, is the action initial segment so much more effective as, 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 we, as, many, as many think in, 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 in inhibiting the pyramidal cell? And, 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 and the answer so far is two ways. The, the answer is yes, it is more efficient uh, in, in one situation where the excitatory and the inhibitory input are very coactive, are coactive, but it's not by a big percentage. Maybe it's more efficient in the decreasing 10 to 20% of the, of the spikes. And this is kind of consistent with previous modeling in the cat visual cortex, which again argued that uh, the inhibition at the action initial so segment is not as kind of dramatically uh, more efficient than uh, the soma, and and that uh, and that makes us think if there are other properties of the of the action initial segment uh, that that make it um, and that that currently are not in the modeling, but 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 are important for the effect of the Shunley uh, cell uh, of the Shunley cell action, like for example um, calcium calcium uh, retaining organelles and so forth, which you also discuss on the paper that I don't have time to discuss right now. So, so this was the pyramid, the Shunley cells, and one can argue, okay, you picked an easy example. Can you, can you do those correlations? Can you go through using the morphology to link other cell types in the, between um, EM and, um, and, um, and, uh, and the other properties that we know they are important for, for modeling? Um, and so again here, See, so here, here are examples for other cell types. On, 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 the, um, on in color, are again uh, example morphologies of excitatory cells from the work of uh, Nathan Goins and Stacy Sorensen that I mentioned before. Um, this and, and this is uh, layer five six tufted cells. This is layer four non six tufted cells. This is uh, thin tufted cells of layer five. This is the the white short layer two three cells, and and. And in black are using basically the same clustering techniques, examples uh, from, from uh, our large millimeter QBM data set. And you can see that they are, they are kind of very, they, they relate to each other quite, uh, quite, quite, quite nicely. And, and, and again, like we did for the chandelier, what this allows us now to do is from, from the connectivity side, we can basically, we start to have the patterns of connectivity from the cell types. And here is the one from the layer of, five thick tufted cells. You can see that 2% of its synapses are formed with other layer five thick tufted cells, but most of their synapses are formed with either IT, layer six cells. And, and actually most kind of surprising for me, almost uh, two thirds of their synapses are with inhibitory cells, uh, basket cells and, and Martinotti cells, which are putative parvalbumin and SSD cells, which is, you know, most of the available cells around them are actually excitatory, but yeah, almost two thirds of their synapses actually with inhibitory cells. 
and and since now we have this morph morphology as a as a Rosetta Stone, we can go to in this case the data sets of the institute, but there are uh, there are also other factors too for the same cell types. Of the PV, the SSD cells. Um, now we, we can also know if they are facilitating or depressing and, and so forth. And again, this is one example, but uh, but uh, the, you can imagine many other many other properties that you might want to link on data sets that have morphology uh, as, a, as a as a as a as a kind of a, as, a, as a Rosetta Stone. So just to finalize, I want to say that um, you know, we made again stress that uh, the brain is not just made of first. This data, starts, it's available out there, a smaller data set. Please use it and, 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 and tell us what, 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 what tools will be more useful to you. But also say the brain was not made of neurons. And again, the beautiful segmentation of Sebastian also allows us not just to get neurons, but microglia, oligodendrocyte precursor cells, uh, oligodendrocytes, astrocytes. And I'm, I'm, I'm finishing with a, a video of the work of Joanne Buchanan on, on kind of that, um, that that uh, that um, uh, was working with the interaction between uh, uh, glia and, and 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 neurons and and so again just to show this beautiful again not not proofread microglia uh, um, uh, close to a neuron touching it um, interacting with it um, um, and uh, and to finish I want to thank everyone uh, at the at the um, at, at the Institute, particularly our network anatomy, anatomy team that kind of created these data sets and is generating the tools to, to analyze it, our program management team, our, our Institute leadership on CUI, uh, um, Ed, um, Edlin and, uh, and Christoph and Christoph Koch, and, um, and of course, uh, Mr. 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 Paul Allen, which uh, kind of made it all possible. So thank you so much. Great, thank you very much, Noah. Wonderful talk, thanks. Okay, so um, we are running out of time, but let's take a couple of questions quickly and then go for break. So uh, here's a question from Ben Juan. Does each pyramidal cell only receive a chandelier cell input from a single chandelier cell? Or can it be enervated by multiple chandeliers? In other words, does each chandelier cell has its own non-overlapping territory of pyramidal cells. No, it's it's highly overlapping, and a, a pyramidal cell receives e input from multiple uh, chandelier, chandelier, chandelier axons. Okay, thanks. So another question from Aleph Muller. Um, Nuno, thanks for this interesting talk. Have you looked at the gap junction network between the chandelier cells? Many inhibitory cells are preferentially coupled by gap junctions. Could this provide an explanation for the high chandelier to chandelier correlation, for example, that they are firing as a population? Uh, so, um, so we only on that small volume we have two chandelier cells with. Um, so we have axons for many chandelier cells that you cannot track to the soma, but we have two chandelier cells with soma and dendrites in the volume, and every time these two the dendrites of these chandelier cells touch each other, they form a density that is. Uh, that is quite consistent with the fact that they are that there are gap junctions between them. More interesting, more interesting than that. Every time they they touch each other and they form this junction that is consistent with um, with uh, with the gap junction. There's also a synapse from an axon, and uh, we cannot on that data set we cannot trace that axon back to the soma. But when you look at its morphology, it seems to be kind of all of the gap junctions receive a synapse there, or most of the gap junctions receive a, a synapse from an axon that is very similar across gap junctions. Thanks. A uh, question from uh, Terry Sinovsky. Is it possible to determine the origin of input axons from outside the block? Um, uh, for, some, for, some inputs, uh, for some inputs, yes. For other inputs, no. For example, thalamic inputs to to these volumes, um, we have we have um, through their we know that they have a particular set of morphology. They always have mitochondria packed with vesicles. They have an astrocyte around them. So for some for some for some inputs, the answer is yes. For other inputs, we don't know. So far, we only look at uh, thalamic input, and those we feel very confident we can identify them inside the volume. 
they're, they're, they're kind of genetic, EM genetic markers that we can also use to kind of uh, uh, add, add to that, but we have, we, have, we have not used those markers on the large data set, just in smaller. Okay, thanks. Uh, maybe one last question. Uh, so, well, you answered in part already a question from Greg Handy. Um, any plans to add glial cells into the connectome story? It would be interesting to see how many synapses also have a glial cell in close proximity and how this varies across brain regions. And a related question from Li Hui. Um, are you able to see the interactions of microglia and synapses? Uh, we so we we definitely see we we we, we definitely see when <clears throat> the, the the glial cells microglia and 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 actually the part where you're most advanced is with Joanne Bouquet and studying the oligodendron side precursor cells when they touch and they and they interact with them um, with uh, with with the neurons and sina and synapses in in some in some of these cases um, which was surprising to and not with the microglia but with the oligodendron side precursor cells. This, this, they, they are, they have phagolysosomes, which means they are kind of cleaning and digesting some of the branches of the neurons. So we don't see any kind of, um, which is, which was kind of surprising, surprising for us. They kind of trimming, trimming the, the, the axonal arbors of this, of, 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 of the neurons. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you very much, Nuno. That was a great talk. Uh, and thanks to all the presenters of the first session.